very hard interview that I'm going to do because it involves a friend of mine who was killed in 2007. But uh, these gentlemen, I have to talk to. Introduce yourself. Ali Salim Bey. And I'm John Muhammad Bey. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, some. First of all, let's let's go back. Tell from my from your point of view what happened with Chauncey Bailey in 2007. Because there's been a lot of change in Oakland since then, and let's get people caught up. You know? Right. Well, uh, the basic story is is that in 2007. Uh, myself and my family were under attack by uh, people who had taken over your Black Muslim Bay. We had evidence that the police department were aiding and abetting them in uh, their fraud, their crime, their ability to attack us without repercussion. Um, they were co-conspiring co with uh, the DA to have to, to put multiple bails on these people who were dangerous inside our community. And so, at a certain point, we saw that the police were setting up. Use of the fourth to be their fall guy, and because he had a long string of crimes, and they had been in there helping him, the bakery was in uh, bankruptcy. So we preemptively went to Mayor Ron Dellums' office, met with Deshaun Huff, his chief of intergovernmental affairs, gave her a letter and evidence that police OPB chain of command was involved with the cover-up of murders and crimes against our family. From that uh, meeting, Vashon Huff gave the, uh, the evidence that I had to the lawyer, the uh, uh, mayor's lawyer, and a day later, the mayor's lawyer, through Vashon Huff, came back and said, the mayor can't touch this, this is evidence against the uh -huh. police department. But just before we get to there, back way up to what happened to Charlotte Chauncey, those people who were... You know. Well, Chauncey was murdered on 8-2-2007. Uh, uh, the person that they convicted on the murder was Yusuf Bey IV. Yusuf Bey IV's uh, admitted mentor was uh, police intelligence officer Derwin Longmire. Okay, so what happened, what ended up happening was as Yusuf Bey IV was going through and, and holding uh, the bakery hostage uh, by force. Oakland Police Department officer Longmire was aiding and abetting him while not talking to us. Also, something else too. For those at this point, someone's going to say, well, "Why would they want to kill Chauncey?" So yeah. why would they kill Chauncey? Yeah. Well, there's that, a lot of people that are going to see us who don't know. Right. Well, you know. That goes back to Rashawn Huff and the fact that they instructed me to file a complaint with the Citizens Police Review Board. And as well they as... Sheldon with Chauncey does, by the way. Uh, they did, you know. Well, what Chauncey is, uh, uh, covers the black community. For the uh, Oakland Post. Right? For the Oakland Post. Uh, works for Paul Cobb. Right. Uh, so what ended up happening is we, I went to the file a complaint for the Citizens Police Review Board. Uh, they closed it the same day. That was 7-13-2007. At the same time, they opened up an internal affairs uh, division, o OPD internal affairs division complaint 07-0538 about the mishandling of evidence as well as lack of investigation of the murder of Wajid Bey and the attempted murder of John Muhammad Bey. Uh, that was 7-13. Once they closed it, Four days later, I ran into Chauncey Bailey, who had a uh, history with us. He, he'd written multiple stories about uh, our, my brother and I's business, uh, which was John. which was installing computer labs inside the Oakland Unified School District in Flatland Schools. So the Oakland Police Department had a choice between working with the Bay family members that were installing computer labs in Oakland Unified School District and improving the lot of, 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 of children of color inside Oakland that would have reduced crime from dropout and everything and decided that they would help Yusuf the Fourth, which had a long history of crimes up to and including terrorist threats inside of our community. This was all known by chain of command all the way up to and including ex-chief Tucker and assistant chief Jordan, who's the current chief right now. Uh, Deputy Chief Lohman, as well as Ursie Joyner, who was the supervisor of CID, criminal intelligence, who, uh, he was a direct supervisor of Derwin Longmire, as well as the officer that was working on 
the crimes against our family. So simultaneously in the same division in OPD, you had one officer working on crimes against our family who the lead suspect was Yusuf IV, as well as his brother Antar, and his mentor, Nadar Beck. Okay? And at the same time, you had Longmire actively aiding and abetting Yusuf IV to stay out of jail so that he could continue to target people in our family. You want to ask him? Uh, I would just go back further. Sure. <laughs> um, and with the uh, CPRB report that Salim filed, it referenced the uh, murder in 2004 of Wajid Bey, who was the successor, named successor, accepted CEO of Your Black Muslim Bakery. Uh, and then it also referenced the shooting in, in my case, which the police admitted was linked to the, the takeover and the uh, established, they had established that there were two factions within the Bay family that were vying over the assets of the corporation because the, at that time the assets totaled uh, between three and five million. Mm -hmm. um, so we, we first referenced the 2004 murder, my 2005 shooting, which was in June, and then in you were uh, shot or what I was shot multiple times by four gunmen. Um, That's right, I remember that. Yeah, 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 um, yeah, yeah. And they uh, sure subsequently closed that case in two months. We didn't find that out until last year. Who were the gunmen that uh, shot you? Uh, yeah. It hasn't been proven yet. They're, they haven't, they haven't been at large. Anything. At large, case is closed. How are um, you doing psychologically with that? Uh, I'm good. I'm staying on point. So my focus is to get all the information out, and then we'll see what happens after all the information is out, which is why what our demand is is for a federal independent investigation so we can look at all of the facts. So now to go back to Link, uh, again, the use of fourth and his history versus our history as uh, businessmen, fathers, uh, and responsible people in the community. Uh, after my shooting in June, uh, one of the weapons was a shotgun. There's a case we have uh, on Yusuf's that's file. Right. That's correct. That's from August uh, 1st of 05, mm -hmm. where he was brandishing a, a shotgun in a carjacking. And they, the original charge was making terrorist threats. Uh, that was August. Then we know about the liquor store case in November of 2005. Right. So. Uh, we didn't know who was that was where the that was where the liquor store was uh, correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm gonna have a fruit plate by the. We're at the uh, Lakeshore Cafe. But, uh, say hi. He's always yeah, yeah. So uh, mixing our work with our with our. I'm just gonna have a fruit plate. I don't know what you don't know. Yeah, coffee. Joe, what's up, coffee? Yeah. Um. Uh. So then we go to the the liquor store thing where where it was vandalized where. These young uh, guys go in, uh, tear up the liquor stores on camera. Right. I remember King uh, TV, you had that. Everybody. Everybody, everybody had, had it all over. Yeah. Like, how, what else are you going to do? How, yeah. many, how many Muslims do you know who are who have a security company who would go in and not case the place beforehand, do reconnaissance to see that there is a uh, camera <laughs> right there? Okay. Right. Perfectly lined up so that you can catch this picture of these guys with bow ties on, uh, banging on these doors. That's a, you know, that's a fallacy that those would be Muslims. These are all teenagers that came off the street who had been in the bakery less than a year, on the whole, less than a year. These are that's who was involved in that. This is right on the heels of August 1st, 2005. Yusuf the Fourth was arrested for carjacking, brandishing a shotgun, making terrorist threats. Mm -hmm. So if you have the day after the liquor store uh, uh, incident happening, you have Assistant Chief Jordan, uh, Deputy Chief Loneman, you have CID Andre Rashad, and you have two uh, FBI agents meet at the FBI office to discuss use of the court. Why two months later wouldn't be terrorist threats be on the table. You would have Yusuf the Fourth's uh, uh, record in front of you. So when you made the choice to give Yusuf the Fourth special treatment, and that's not our uh, definition of what they did for Yusuf the Fourth. If you look at the State Department of Justice uh, uh, investigation of the Chauncey Bailey murder, it says another officer describes it as giving Yusuf the Fourth special treatment. Once you realize that 
they had on the plate, they had on the table the t making terrorist threats with a shotgun, which is linked to John Muhammad Bay's uh, uh, attempted murder by four gunmen with using one of the weapons was a shotgun. And that the, uh, uh, the bakery, people from the bakery uh, associated with the bakery were the lead suspects. This comes from OPD saying that the, the lead suspects were people that were connected to the bakery. That's what they'll say off camera, but to us, I mean to anybody else, they won't say that. But it goes back to saying that why would the chief of police, the current chief of police, put a person who made terrorist threats in our community back on the street by giving him special treatment? All you're doing is emboldening him to, to at a later date, commit more crimes, which, flash forward to 2007, using the same shotgun they gave him a pass on, he murdered Chauncey Bailey in broad daylight. Now, between the first time... Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. Between the first time giving him special treatment, or between that time that we have proof of them giving him special treatment, let alone uh, giving him a pass where at this meeting in 2005 that the current chief knew Yusuf Bay IV was on $74.5,000 worth of bail just two months before. Mm -hmm. And then after the liquor store, he was on $200,000 worth of bail. You have over, you have upwards of $275,000 worth of bail on this person, all associated with violence, hate crimes, terrorist threats, uh, let alone the, the, uh, the uh, bouncer at the strip club in San Francisco yeah, that trying to run that guy. That was 06. So yeah, was between 05 and 07, there's plenty of crime where Yusuf Bay the Fourth's name keeps coming up and they fail to put a sufficient enough bail, revoke bail, or arrest him in any of those crimes. The obvious question that's at that is what uh, does the OPD have to gain by having him out loose? Uh, are they satisfied? Maybe they will, satisfied. They wanted him killed as well. Chauncey, well, well the, moment, the main thing is what they satisfy is a COINTELPRO operation. So this okay. goes back to the history of the J. Edgar and uh, his COINTELPRO operation to destroy black organizations and black nationalist movements. Your Black Muslim Bakery was the last bastion from 1968 that survived. Right. Dr. Right. Bay right. was the very last one, and once he died in 2003, then they went to work with right. that plan. Right. So, uh, in the... I remember uh, Dr. Bay, uh, I met Dr. Bay Duella here. That worked for okay. his economic advisor. Right. So, yeah. yeah. So, so, the, so the, the bakery's... And Nader as well. Right. The bakery's reputation in the city was as an institution that served the community. Right. You had hundreds of people who were working there at the time who had no criminal record before Wajid, who was the legal CEO, was murdered in uh, February 27, 2004. So at that point right there, your black Muslim bakery ceased to exist. We came to the, we went to the Oakland Police Department and said that the takeover of the bakery could you repeat that? That's what he's saying is a key point. Okay. That your black Muslim bakery ceased to exist, and and what right. happened? What who? What entity went forward and? Sure. Okay. So legally, your the last day that uh, Wajid Bay was saw was seen alive was uh, February 27, 2004. Everything that happened after that was another entity. Your Black Muslim Bank ceased to legally exist at that point, and the police knew that. It was taken over by Antar Bay and Nadar Bay, who subsequently began, who began to transfer property out of the corporation and privately into their name until they began to liquidate. Your Black Muslim Bakery was unencumbered in 2004, and it was, and it was a paid-for building with a million-dollar uh, appraisal. At the end of 2004, Nadar Bay and Antar Bay illegally took out $650,000 uh, in refinance out of the bakery, which was only five months after the Say that one more time. Nadar Bay and Antar Bay and Roberson, uh, a guy named Earl Roberson, Earl Roberson, Earl Roberson, Earl Roberson. Okay. Who, is the, who is currently listed on at, at the uh, state level as the uh, person uh, to be served for the corporation, for Joe Black Muslim Bakery Corporation, which is uh, the, the business uh, contact for your Black Muslim currently. 
And uh, so they got together, they took out $650,000, didn't pay any of the taxes, which is what came back to bite the you know, came back to destroy the bakery in uh, 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 bankruptcy. But all of this happened just five months after the body of Wajib Bay was found in a shallow grave wrapped in plastic and duct tape. So what type of due diligence was done by uh, by Davis Mortgage. Davis Mortgage. Mortgage. Yeah, yeah. We, they got paid off too. Right. Wow. Yeah. What, what kind of due diligence was done by the mortgage company as well as Fidelity uh, National Title, I believe, is a title company where a corporation, you know, uh, couldn't prove that its uh, uh, CEO was older than uh, months old. And then to find out what happened to the previous CEO, he was murdered, and that case is still open to this day. But the police will tell us behind closed doors that the uh, 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 their lead suspects are Antar Bey and Nadar Bey, who benefited from the murder of Wajib Bey. This is the story that we took to Chauncey Bailey. When we gave Chauncey Bailey a story, it was how the bakery was taken over in a coup and how much money was taken out of it and why it was in an illegal bankruptcy. A story has never gotten out. Right, which has never got out. So we're saying that once the, yeah, once the bakery was taken over, that was, you know, and uh, Yusuf IV became the CEO after his brother Antar was murdered in the gas station. Did Thomas P. and Bob Butler mention this? Never. Why? Never mentions it. Because it doesn't fit the profile that we were a wild and crazy Muslim cult group that just ran around murdering people. Headlines. Right. Were the headlines better? Bay family, out of control, Bay family member, Bay family associate. Those headlines. Right. It, it, got him a book. Right. It doesn't fit that. It doesn't. Mark Reynolds as the uh, publisher right. of the trip. Mm -hmm. He was, you know, top dog at that time. He knows the trip. The trip. Right. So you have uh, uh, Thomas Peel, Bob Butler, what we refer to as the, the Pimp Chauncey Bailey Project or the Chauncey Bailey Pimp Project because the Tribune and the Chauncey Bailey Project has made more money. I have to say, I agree with it. Has made more money off of the death and soap opera of Chauncey Bailey at a time when the economy was slipping and newspapers were going out. They were able to uh, sell newspapers based on exaggerations and uh, uh, making this to be out more than it was. With, and all the time, you ignore the fact that the original story was that the police department created use of Bay the Fort, and that we have uh, we have the proof. Uh, hold on a second. Before sure. I get to that, we have the crew. Uh, uh, you know, as he mentioned, it was an illegal bankruptcy. <laughs> that was why it was so important to differentiate your black your black Muslim bakery incorporated under YG mm -hmm. versus this your OPD bakery that was created that use of fourth ran uh, into the ground. He was never legally a CEO at all. He was he was a sandwich maker at the bakery. He was often a late to work, so he was never able to, huh. he wasn't responsible for nothing, but he was 19 at the time. Huh. But if they emboldened him and allowed him to think he's someone other than he was, um, then they gave him all these assets. He was in over his head. He got to, uh, uh, Fadeen Coulter to quickly enter into the bankruptcy, and he's again a 19-year-old CEO replacing a CEO who was suspect on a carjacking. That Antar thing hasn't been solved. Um, and Longmire was, and the, Longmire was, Longmire was the lead officer. detective on the Antar murder, which just so happened to happen be months before we had proven that Antar was not the legal CEO. We had board members sign affidavits saying that the uh, documents that they submitted into the family lawsuit against Antar and Nedar in the takeover, which was initiated a month after Law, uh, uh, Wajid was murdered. So the police had knowledge that there was two sides. We've shown them proof that we had a lawsuit against these people who took over the bakery. But yet, in 2005, the police chief consciously backed a 19 Was that backed at the time? No, 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 no. That was uh, Walker Tucker. This is Tucker. Sorry, that was Tucker. This is, this is Tucker. Was Tucker. But Wayne the, Tucker. Right. But, but within the uh, uh, Chief Jordan, Colonel mm -hmm. Chief Jordan was at the FBI meeting. Mm -hmm. 
and made the conscious decision to back a 19-year-old who we just showed you had, t had made terrorist threats, who was known inside the uh, uh, police department to be connected to the attempted murder of my brother John. He's the brother of the person who's the lead suspect of the murder of YG. So when they made that decision, they consciously made the decision to choose a person who was 19 years old over a 42-year-old who had no criminal record, still has no criminal record. I was a 42-year-old, have, still have no criminal record, no felonies, no outstanding warrants or anything. But you have somebody who's on bail for making terrorist threats and carjacking with a shotgun. The same M.O. of his attack, the same M.O. of the attack on Chauncey Bailey. Going back, YG was last seen on, to, uh, was last seen being dropped off at his house. The next time he was to be seen was at work the next day. That means somewhere between at home and at work, he was ambushed. He was, my brother was leaving his house at 6.30 in the morning to go to work when he was attacked early in the morning. Chauncey Bailey was attacked 7.30 in the morning between his home Over and... Over there Allison 17. Right. You Allison, have, uh, 14, MO, 14, right. Yeah. Allison, you have the same MO Oakland. on all of these things, including the fact that we, had, we have a complaint that predates Chauncey Bailey's murder. That complaint connects his convicted murder, Yusuf Bay the Fourth, with Longmire. And that's never been investigated. Meanwhile, for the people watching, what's the truth? That's, what's the story that's out there versus what you're talking right. about? Right. Well, the story that's been put out there by the Chauncey Bailey Project is that uh, Cha that Chauncey Bailey was working on a story about the bakery's finances. Okay. The bakery was in bankruptcy and its finances were public on the record. So there was no investigation of the bakery's finances. What the story was was that... Uh, the police helped the bakery become take, uh, taken over and driven into bankruptcy. And we were trying to stop the illegal bankruptcy. Chauncey Bailey's story was to stop the illegal bankruptcy so we could look and say, these are the real owners. These are the people that built the institution of the bakery that's respected. This is Chauncey Bailey's story going to then, was going to then talk about the police then. Right. So Chauncey Bailey. eventually would have led in that direction. Chauncey Bailey's also story. conducted his own investigation of the police, you may remember. Yeah, right. Uh, so he was doing his own, so then we bring our thing, which has the same police connection. So, so one of the one of the quotes that I have from Chauncey Bailey uh, when I met him before he was murdered was, I believe everything that you're saying, that you're saying because what I'm working on corroborates that. So what you're bringing me fits exactly what I'm working on right now. And so that's why when our... Uh, everything that we brought him is based on an original investigation, a uh, family investigation that started after our loved one, our brother YG, was, uh, disappeared. When YG disappeared, our family was concerned enough to call all the hospitals, call all the police stations, call the morgue to search, to file a uh, missing persons report 72 hours after because that's as long as we have to wait before we did it. 24 hours after we filed a citizen's, I mean, a, a, a missing persons report on our, our brother Wajid Bay, the next day, uh, yeah. the, the, the guy we mentioned from intelligence, Andre Rachel, mm -hmm. uh, showed up at my house. Uh, Officer Crutchfield from Homicide showed up at my house. We had a third guy, and they identified themselves as OPD, but I found out later the third guy was FBI. Huh. So the very first day they come to investigate Wajid's murder, I mean Wajid's uh, disappearance, just reported, just reported missing, less than 24 hours after reporting Wajid, CEO of Your Black Muslim Bakery, disappeared, uh, as disappeared, the FBI, police intelligence, and homicide show up. We just reported him missing. Now, so that shows you that on... Why the heck did they show up? There's a question, right? It's never been investigated. Right? Did no, they tell you? No one when mentions came Andre. To uh, no, not, not for months later. And then they said it was more or less... Uh, it was an opportunity to see what they could do. Hmm. See what they could find out. Uh, they had been waiting for that. They, their basic premise was they were waiting for something like this to happen so that they could then, uh, you know, become involved. Wow. And, right, and since we were the ones that were attacked, 
they came to us with the fake premise of, oh, we're trying to help you investigate this and, and do different things along that line, when they were really playing us by helping the people who were trying to murder people in our family. The other question is going to come up. Have you approached Mayor Kwan about this? The new administration? Uh, or? We uh, had a hallway meeting with one of her staffers. Who is that? Uh, Ms. Campbell. Annie. Uh, Annie. 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 Annie Washington Campbell. Uh, it, her her email kicked it back. Uh, so we'll have to follow up to get it to her. Um, but she and, has, she'll free, she's a Facebook friend, she's a friend of mine. Okay. 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 But uh, we made an open presentation at the uh, city council on June 28th, on June 28th, with the mayor there. And everything that we've been telling you, we said in one minute clips, because that's all they let you say on right. uh, right. open forum. Right. And But we packed it all in there. They ignored it and kept going. But since that before, uh, uh, two days before that, we approached the Public Safety Committee, which uh, is charged. Have you, have you thought about going to your council member having it itemized as a general? As we, we've general. already requested that uh, okay. from multiple council members. The citizen members. can't do that on their own. Right. We, we, we've requested that uh, from multiple city council members. We met with uh, uh, Councilman Member Kaplan's uh, Chief of Staff, and we requested it. Andre. Right? Yeah. We requested it a long time ago from... You can actually go to City Hall yourself and do it. Like FYI. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah, you, yeah. You actually, can, go you actually go there to and the write office. something down. And yeah, you can have it agendized, just FYI. Okay. Yeah, so you can do that. Yeah. And then the Rules Committee is supposed to follow up with that. Yes. Yeah. So, yeah, you don't necessarily have to have the council member there, you know, to do that. You can. They don't tell you that. No, they That's, sure don't. You know, but go to uh, City Clerk's office, you can actually do so, that. Yeah. So, we're doing multiple fronts, so we'll add that. Sure. Sure. Thank you. So, then also, just leading up to that, to show you what our credibility is, is... July, dated July 30th, which is just two days before John C. Bailey's murder. This is a, uh, a letter recommendation given to me by Mayor Dellum's office uh, that say, I'm sure the owners of your Black Northern Bakery will avail themselves of every direct direction and opportunity to extend them to ensure that their business remains open, you know, and that it's an established itself as an integral part of the community. These are, this is what an institution is, and it's proven. That's one. This is from... Congressional uh, Black Caucus letter? Well, I'll get you that one. Okay. Keith Carson. Uh, Keith Carson, yeah. uh, which calls it a long-standing institution, mm -hmm. and how it creates jobs and these different things. Mm -hmm. uh, this one is dated July 24th, mm -hmm. right before Chauncey Bailey's uh, murder. Mm -hmm. And uh, this one... Dated July 17th from them, and it says, uh, vital job opportunities for our local residents. Mm -hmm. Okay, with the closing of your Black Muslim Bakery, hundreds of people, hundreds of vertical black businesses uh, had to close based on the fact that as an institution, you, uh, the press will focus on one or two people, but they uh, ignore the fact that there's hundreds of people that work in uh, 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 the bakery and support their families with it. vertical businesses where the bakery was it's either its major supplier or its major customer so all of those businesses either failed or went out right as the economy tanked so the uh, the pressure have a cup of coffee too as well please yeah, yeah. Sorry. so the so the pressure economic pressure on the black community was multiplied because the the largest black economic engine in Oakland was your black Muslim bakery Right? So by the uh, Oakland Police Department targeting your black Muslim bakery, targeting all the people who worked there job, uh, and, and had jobs and supported their family, that's economic terrorism. The other point is, is that black Muslims have been established in the gateway area of Oakland for over 40 years. By attacking and uprooting that whole Thank community. Thank you. Go ahead. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. By attacking and uprooting that whole community, the Oakland Police Department and, uh, by extension, the city of Oakland have committed ethnic cleansing of an area. If you look at the equivalent of the number of people and draw a parallel to Kosovo, where ethnic cleansing was first uh, designated a, U, uh, a, a UN crime against humanity, the same principles apply. But the obvious question is, to what gain? Oh, well, the game is, that? is that your black, uh, by showing you these letters of support, shows that your black Muslim bakery was an, uh, not only an independent economic powerhouse, right. but also was a political powerhouse. We were also 
the uh, 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 station of last resort for any community member that had beef against the police and needed redress, they could come to the bakery and, 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 and make a presentation. Well, the question back is, with black unemployment so high, with the need for entrepreneurialism so high, you know, why, why would somebody in the police department do that? Who would do it? What would they have to gain by doing it? Except, basically, I'm starting to fill in the blank. You're saying that that's really a threat to how they operate. Exactly. Okay, and I'm just trying also, to fill in the blank. Uh, that's okay. Yeah. That was uh, post 9 11. Mm -hmm. So they were able to get FBI monies if they could show subversive Muslims within the community. And wow. then again, if you go to that COINTELPRO, black Muslims were one of the top ones after the Panthers and after all of the other groups that they disbanded. So this goes back to kind of one of their core um, police federal issues on how to control the black community. Uh, they got rid of Chuck Johnson and Soul Beat as well. Mm -hmm. All these things happened at once. So that's, again, why Johnson was first, so important. Black, black men first. Uh, the year before the media, right? So yeah, Which yeah. was uh, uh, gaining. But then also to get back to what you're saying is, you know, we have documents that are from uh, FOIA documents that were declassified from COINTELPRO, from J. Edgar Hitler, that uh, showed that they wanted to target black Muslims and uh, uh, black nationalists. And these are dated in 67, 68, 69. Bakery was founded in 1968. Chief, oh, no, he's, okay. he's Chief, to get to it. Uh, okay, uh, uh, Ex-Chief Tucker was a rookie in 1968. So, if these illegal COINTELPRO documents that said destroy black Muslims, destroy the Black Panthers, we don't even care if you have uh, uh, evidence against them, create something if you don't have something. This is the culture that, uh, uh, that Tucker be was, was a rookie in. So when he came into the uh, department and your black Muslim bakery was founded, and then you're getting uh, 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 messages from uh, the FBI that's saying, destroy this organization, destroy it. Everybody you see today, Jordan, Tucker, Loman, uh, Rashal, uh, Joyner, were all trained by people who were trained under destroy black nationalist organizations. We got about seven minutes of battery life, so. Uh, I wanted to show you this yeah, right quick too. Yeah. Uh, which, after showing you the other three, which is a low, um, uh, the mayor, the mm -hmm. county supervisor, the state assembly, when, yeah. huh? when, this is a letter of support Barbara Lee. from Barbara Lee's office. What's, what you really have to zero in on is the date. 8-2-2007 hmm. is the day that Chauncey Bailey was, was murdered. Right. Right. The time is 7.35 p.m. So 12 hours after Chauncey Bailey was murdered, Barbara Lee's office sent, faxed me personally a letter of support, which basically proved that she uh, believed that in the, 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 uh, the dispute between the Bay family members, that we were the legitimate ones. Right. Because you wouldn't after the murder of Chunky Bailey and the media. Now, what would you like to see done? In the, let's say the investigation happens. What, what's your crystal ball? What would you like to see done in your... Uh, you let know. the truth come out. Mm -hmm. uh, number one, that it, it was the police. Not our family, um, and, and that's really it. The police and whoever was involved, whether it be the FBI, um, the, the district. And when you say the police, you mean like certain people in certain the office. Chain of command, right? Chain, right. chain, chain of command at the time. Sorry, chain of command. So, are you implying this like the writer's case in a sense, but it hasn't been properly investigated? I mean, it, well, that, maybe there was, there was some real police officers, or right, well, most, you know. Well, most definitely, uh, one of the uh, one of the things that really needs to be pointed out with the the Chauncey Bailey Pimp Project was, they actually proved that OPD was inside the bakery. After a whole year and a half of investigating uh, the Bay family members and finding that we had absolutely no connection whatsoever to anything that happened inside the bakery between 2004 and the murder of Chauncey Bailey, the only questions that remained were, what were the police involved? And then they found Longmire, and then they found you know all of these different things. Once they got uh, 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 Devondre to roll on Yusuf Bey the Fourth, they shut down the investigation of the police and put everything on. Right, you were saying. Sorry. I said, let's be very clear that we're not talking about the Oakland Police Department rank and file, the ones that uh, take orders and follow uh, the letter of the law and serve the community and everything like that. If you're serving the community and doing your job. That's what your job is, that's what you're getting paid for, and we appreciate you. 
What we're talking about specifically is chain of command. The police chief who uh, answered directly to then Mayor Jerry Brown. So what was Jerry Brown do about all of this stuff that was going on? And it was a direct conflict of interest for the state DOJ to come in and investigate the Chauncey Bailey murder when this whole thing started under Jerry Brown. And he was working on a story about Jerry Brown. Uh, Remember the document shredding? Yeah. Jerry, you got some explaining to do? Yeah. yeah. So, That's right, because he shredded those. Right. right. Yeah. So at the exact same Explain that document shredding again for people uh, watching. I don't know the full story, but as he left town, there were some documents that he shredded that were public documents. He being Jerry Brown. Jerry Brown yeah. shredded. Or he left uh, the six. actually still lives yeah. in Oakland. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, his yeah. job left yeah. Open, yeah. So. Uh, he he uh, got rid of some documents that could have been evidence of some of the things that he was doing. Conspiring with developers and development of the Gateway area was one of the key aspects of Jerry Brown's 10,000 people coming down to different areas that he wanted to develop. The Gateway area is one of those targeted areas. Right. So therefore, with political power and uh, going against Jerry Brown and the things he was doing to the black community at the time mm -hmm. on his stepping stone to the AG office to the governor's office and everything like that. Your Black Music Bank would pose a direct threat to his, you know, uh, unfettered right. uh, power grab. In fact, if you look at it at the same time in history, Jerry Brown is guilty of dismantling black power across the board in Oakland. So don't just believe us. Go to other people, other black uh, power brokers in Oakland at the time, and you'll see the things that Jerry Brown was doing was to become the strong man and dismantle black power in Oakland. Well, on that note, gentlemen, 40 something minutes of video time. 45. Thank you. Thank you. There you go. Thank you. Hey, thank you, Zenny. Okay. Yeah, my pleasure. In the, you know, in the spirit of Chelsea Bailey, who was the only person to date until you came today, was the only person who was brave enough to tell this truth. We saw what happened to Chelsea Bailey. So, one of the things that we want to make sure that we do is that this black man gave his life to get this story out about right. an attack on the black community. We would be derelict in our duty, you know, to, to him sacrificing his life if right. we didn't still fight to this day five years later. And we thank you so much for having the courage to keep this going. Yeah, thank you for coming. I appreciate that. Hey, thank you. Yes, sir.